So far we have primarily focused on regression problems. We now move on to a different class of machine learning methods. We move on to classification methods. In this video we start off with explaining some terminology and talk primarily about decision regions. Now again, also in classification problems, we're dealing with data of the form uh, input target pairs, so input target pairs. But in contrast to the regression case where the targets uh, took on continuous values, in the classification case, the targets can only take on one out of n classes, so a discrete set of, of target values. So uh, we say that our target, our target belongs to one out of, let's say, a k classes denoted with class one, class 2 and class k. So my target can only take on uh, one of these uh, options. So I have a discrete target. Okay, so what we then do, we can either say something like my target um, is class 1 or belongs to class 1 or my target belongs to class 2. Uh, but we can equivalently do something like this. Um, this is in the two class case. We can say my target is either 0 or this one. Okay, so it's a binary classification. I have two options and it's convenient to, to code this with a zero and a one. But in the multi-class case, we cannot do this, right? Because we don't have a clear ordering of these classes. So this could be anything. It could be cats, dogs, uh, apples, pears. So it's an abstract thing. There's no ordering. So in, then we can no longer just assign numbers to it. But, but there's a way to do this. And in the multi-class case, so let's consider five different classes, what we could say, uh, either we can say, oh, my target is uh, belongs to class three, or equivalently, we can code this via vectors. We can make a one-hot encoding, as we call it, um, via five-dimensional vector, where only the third component, because I'm considering class three now, where only the third component uh, takes on the value one. Now, this is what we call a one-hot encoding of class C3. Okay, and this will later on make it a bit more practical to work in these multi-class uh, cases. So now we have some numerical thing, a vector we can work with, whereas if we stick to these labels, that's an abstract thing and it's hard to compute with, okay? So in the multi-class case, uh, multi-class targets, we can encode the, uh, the targets via these uh, one-hot encodings. Okay, and now our strategy for building a classifier is going to be as follows. So we have data points, which we assume to be uh, d-dimensional. So each point lies somewhere in, in this d-dimensional space. And we're going to split this space into k decision regions. And we're going to label these regions with r k. So r k really denotes a region. If x lies within this region, I'm going to say that it belongs to class. Okay. Okay. So really as simple as that. That, that. That's what we're going to start off with. And then of course uh, we have different regions and uh, the boundaries of those regions uh, will be called decision, decision boundaries or decision surfaces in this higher dimensional uh, case. Okay. So let's look at an example. So suppose my data looks like this. I'm considering three classes in this uh, example. So I'm considering K is three. And I have all these data points. Uh, so these are the corresponding X values plotted in a 2D uh, plane. And I have a blue class, a red class, class and a green class. And now I'm going to come up with a very simple algorithm. I'm just going to split uh, my domain. Uh, so RD, R2 visualized here into these blocks, into these square regions. And that, that's indicated on the right here. Now for each region, I'm just going to inspect the dominant class. So we have all these points and we're just going to look which uh, class is uh, overrepresented. And I'm going to say then that uh, that uh, region belongs to a particular class. So um, in this case, let's call this region one. So I'm going to say region one is the blue class. Um, I'm going to look at the different regions. So here red is uh, overrepresented. Uh, so I'm going to label this with the red class, so region two. Um, okay, let's write it, region two corresponds to red. Um, and then we have the green class. So in these regions, the green points uh, dominate. So I also have a green class. Okay, so that's simple enough, right? So I'm just going to count 
the number of uh, points belonging to a particular class and I'm just going to pick the class that is most dominant. And, that, and in such an approach, I can divide my entire domain into these uh, regions. So this all red region uh, belongs to uh, the red class. So now when I observe a new data point, uh, for example, this point uh, indicated with a cross over here, well, it lies in, the, in region R2. So I'm going to say, okay, this point belongs to uh, the red class. Okay, and, and then of course we have um, regions or boundaries between these regions and those boundaries will be called decision boundaries. Now, of course, this is a very simple algorithm. Uh, it's not super elegant, but it works. Um, but if you move to a higher dimensional cases, so now I have a 2D uh, place, a space which I split into these uh, square regions, I can still do this. But if I go to higher dimensional cases, th this becomes computationally quite heavy. Um, but also maybe you end up with cells where there are no data points. So what are you going to do there? So, um, okay, <laughs> in the next videos, we'll are, we are going to consider some more uh, clever uh, classes of classification methods. But this will get us started on the idea that there may be such thing as a decision regions. Now that was just an example of some classification method uh, which we just came up with. Now um, there exists a particular class of classifiers that considers only linear decision boundaries. And this class of classifiers is called uh, linear classification methods. So linear classification methods. So and that looks something like this in, in this figure over here, right? So if my data is distributed like this, then a linear classifier would draw these straight lines. It divides my data using straight lines. So that, that is what a linear classification would do. Okay, the setting is then that I have data. So each data point lies into, in this d-dimensional uh, vector space. And this uh, input space is split, it's divided in regions via uh, decision surfaces, which are d minus one dimensional hyperplanes. Right, so in this 2D example, this would be lines. In a 3D uh, space, this would be uh, surfaces or these, these planes. And then in a high dimensional uh, case, we call these uh, hyperplanes. Then we can come up with this uh, nice definition over here. So a data set whose classes can be separated exactly by linear decision surfaces are called linearly separable. Okay, so if we inspect this left figure here, so all the points can be perfectly separated via these linear uh, decision boundaries. So this data set is a linearly uh, separable data set. Whereas this data set where we have points scattered all over the place, there's no way, way we can draw a linear decision uh, boundary that perfectly separates the data. So this is an example of a data set which is not linearly separable. Okay, so these are some uh, definitions which I think are important to remember because uh, we will encounter them um, throughout the upcoming videos. Uh, but now let's take a close look at what we can do with these uh, linear classifiers, with these linear decision boundaries. Now, what if we have the multiple, uh, the case of multiple classes? So k is larger than two. So I'm considering in this example three particular classes. Now, a thing that we could do in the KS2 for two classes, so we can just work with one classifier, right? That just determines um, when my target is C1 or it is C2. So it's a binary classification. But now what I can do in the multiple classes case, I could, for example, work with K minus one classifiers in a one versus the rest approach. So my classifier, I would then, for example, distinguish a target or a data point from uh, my Kate class versus, well, everything that isn't in this class. So I'm just going to uh, develop a classifier that, that is able to recognize when a point is in the class it's trained for um, versus everything else. Okay, this is interesting. We can build some algorithms around this, but we are likely to encounter some problems and that is illustrated in this uh, figure over here. So remember, each classifier splits the whole uh, data set into uh, decision, decision regions. And now consider, for example, this uh, region over here. Um, so I have my classifier for class one versus the rest. Well, this classifier says, okay, this is class one and this isn't in, in class one. Okay, clear. So this is at least not uh, region one. Uh, the same for this classifier for uh, class two versus the rest. It, this region isn't in class two. Okay, so then it's safe to assume that 
um, this belongs to then the third class. Okay, uh, same here for this entire region. Uh, classify one says um, this is everything on this line is belonging to class one. Classifier two says okay, this entire region belongs to class two, but this I don't know. It's at least not class two, so we're safe in this region. We can say then that this is uh, region one because there's no conflict in uh, whatever the classifiers say, and the same actually for for this region, but. What about this region? So here we have one classifier that says, okay, this belongs to uh, class one. That's namely my class one versus the rest classifier, but also my classifier class two versus the rest classifier also says that this belongs to class two. So what is it? Uh, we cannot rely on a majority vote here. Okay, so with this, let's say relatively naive approach to classification, we are bound to run into problems. Uh, we can try different things, of course. We can, for example, also build a bunch of one versus one classifier, meaning that I have uh, a classifier, let's phi, uh, for every pair of classes that takes an input x and basically says, okay, my target belongs either to class uh, ci or it belongs to um, class cj. So it's going to compare two classes and basically it's going to say the most likely one. And then once we have these classifiers, we're going to do predictions uh, via a majority vote. So uh, in this for case, for example, we have a C1 versus C2 classifier. So it says this region belongs to uh, region one. Uh, we have here a C1 versus C3 classifier. It says this region belongs uh, to region one or to class one. Okay, so we're safe to say that this entire part belongs to region one because uh, also here, for example, we have a C2 versus C3 classifier. Um, so we have one classifier that says everything on this side belongs to class three, but then I have two classifiers that say, okay, this region belongs to um, um, class one. So we have a majority vote that says uh, this belongs to region one or to class one. Well, the same actually also for region two and for region three. Uh, three. But what happens in this middle region? So I have this classifier that says it belongs to class one. I have this classifier that says it belongs to class two. And I have this classifier that says it belongs to class three. So I cannot rely, rely on a majority vote here. Uh, so I have this region which is unaccounted for. Okay, so there are some serious limitations to these uh, linear classifier in the case when I have multiple classes and I want to build a classifier built on, well, these uh, binary classifiers. Now, in the upcoming videos, we're going to propose a solution to this. And the solution really is just make one classifier that is able to distinguish between K classes at once. And that's what we're going to discuss in the upcoming videos.